interesting. Hello, Mount Sunny. I welcome to a Black History presentation. This will be part three of the four part series. Today, I will be interviewing, interviewing my grandmother, Edith Morgan. First of all, let me say thank you for agreeing to share your story with my son at NBC virtually. As you know, the theme for this year is the Black family, representation, identity, and diversity. As we begin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you, Jayla. My name is Edith Morgan, and I am the fifth child of Clance and Lucille Gobel, five siblings out of 12. And I live in Cahoma, Mississippi. That's where I was born in Cahoma, Mississippi. And uh, I got married to my sweetheart, Ernest Morgan, in uh, 1964. And 1969, we moved from Cahoma, Mississippi to Memphis, Tennessee. And we've been here ever since. So the first question is, how do you identify yourself? I identify myself as an Afro-American. Has this identification changed over time? Uh, no. Yes, it has. I'm sorry. Yes, it has. Uh, at first, we was uh, colored. And again, we was Negroes. And now we are called afro America. Is your culture identity important to you? Why or why not? Yes, it is. Uh, it it is uh, it is uh, identity to me because uh, we uh, back uh, back in the day. I just say it back then. Uh, we couldn't do things that we wanted to do because of our color and our race. But now we can uh, do whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, I think uh, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks for, uh, paid the way. And now we have uh, black, uh, we have black, had a black president for eight years. And now we have a black uh, vice president. Mm -hmm. And so that letting us know that we can do whatever we want to do. All we have to do is set our mind and to whatever we want to do and, and seek God's guidance and we can do whatever we want to do. All right. So when you was a child, who was the oldest person you knew? And what story do you remember them sharing with you in relation to black history? For example, slavery, Dev lynching. Okay, well, this is this, this old lady. Um, she used to, uh, she was a member of our church, and when, when we was little, she told us a story that uh, about when they was younger, and when they uh, be caught out at night uh, walking, uh, coming from church or wherever, and if they see, meet a car of uh, white people, they would have to hide in the, in the field so that they wouldn't uh, see them. And they was afraid, you know, they did that because they was afraid that they might do something to them and they didn't, you know, did that for their safety. Mm. Was there anything you felt that you couldn't do because of your race? Back then, it was because we know that uh, the whites always had the best of everything and we had to wait on the hand-me-downs and the jobs and all of the different stuff we couldn't get the kind of job that we wanted mm -hmm. and uh, we we just had to take whatever we could get but now we don't because we know that we can do whatever we want to do now we can work with beside you know whites and hispanic and whoever else so God, uh, you know, he, he blessed us that we can do whatever we want to do. And all we have to do is set our mind to it. Mm -hmm. please, was that, please share a moment when you experienced racism and what was your reaction? Okay, uh, this was the time when I was coming home from work one day and there was a little boy that was, at least it was a collar of boys and they was coming from school. And uh, I was standing at the bus stop and I, it caught me off guard. So uh, they patted on the car, hit beating on the car, nigger, nigger. 
and I jumped. I almost jumped in in the street, but I, you know, and after then I got all right. I said because they were just repeating what they had heard their parents, you know, that what they had heard their parents were saying that uh, we know that uh, racism, is racism, uh huh, and and that was a part of racism when they were doing that. They were letting us know that they it's still racism and. It is still here in the world today. And I think it always will be a part of racism. Okay. So how did these events affect your life, your family life, and does it still affect you today? Well, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't affect me today because I know today things are better. And uh, it, it doesn't affect my family uh, because we know that uh, we have rose above all of those races and the different stuff. Mm -hmm. So we know that, you know, we can do whatever God have us to do. So do you feel that the attitudes have changed since segregation? Some has and some hasn't. Uh, but I know uh, mine have. I look at, you know, race, at least I look at whites, black, or whoever, and I just look at them as uh, people's, not, you know, uh, people trying to harm or people trying to get in, in my way or people trying to stop me from doing whatever I want to do, and I know that uh, I can do that. What are your thoughts on mental slavery? Do you think that people are still mentally enslaved today, and in what manner? Okay, now some, yeah, they are in mental slavery today because they, you know, you can be slave to anything. You can be slave to your house. You can be slave to your car. You can be a slave to your job. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that you can be a slave to today. Okay. So for our last question, what would you like to see for growth in the Black family with representation, identity, and diversity? Okay, now, I would like to see uh, husband, wife, living together and raising their children together. And if they do that, it won't be a lot of teenage pregnancy. It won't be a lot of young men robbing and shooting and doing all sorts of things because we know that when two people in two parent home two parents in the home it, you know things be is better but if it, just one parent the mom can't work and she can't go to work and take care of the children and seeing you know after this and seeing after that so if it was two parents uh in the home they could you know raise their children better mm -hmm. And then um, we was talking about earlier how you and granddad, you guys had a, a beautiful marriage. Yeah, we did. Mm -hmm. And that representation, you know, mm -hmm. had, a, had a positive effect on, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we had a beautiful marriage and we was married for 37 years. And um, he, we kept our, our children together. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was, I was out of the home, gone someplace, he was there. And when he was uh, when he was gone, I was there. So it was always someone uh, a duck there with the children. They were never alone by themselves. Mm -hmm. And we know what they were doing. And we another thing we we took them to church. We didn't send them. We took them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's how what kept our family together. And just like I was saying, uh, none of the boys have been to jail, and uh, all my children. Thank God they turn out good. Well, thank you guys. Thank you for letting me interview you. And that'll be it. You're welcome. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you all so very, very much. You're welcome. I wanted to add one piece to it. As Jayla already mentioned, Brother Morgan, I know um, that Brother Morgan, you and Brother Morgan, you all are an intricate part of the Mount Sinai family. 
to this day, I still remember hearing Brother Morgan sing the song, you dig one ditch, you better dig two, because you ditch, you dig, it just may be for you. I mean, that song within itself, it, it's touched me for years. Here I am in my 40s, and I still remember the way he sung that song with such passion and the way he served the Lord with so much passion. Where do you think that passion came from for his family and for the church and for the community? Because he worked in, he was one of the deacons down at the church. And when I tell you I saw him serving his role faithfully, where did that passion come from? Amidst everything that was going on. He, like any other man, had options, but he chose to serve God and he chose to be with his family. Where did that passion come from? It come from it come from God, the love of God, and the love of his family. Say point blank period, huh? <laughs> That's beautiful. Thank you. You all have done a terrific job from being in the family and raising your children and your children having children. So you all have done a spectacular job. You all are one of the pillars that I look up to, my husband and I look up to as we raise our children and our family. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Ms. Morgan, for giving us your time, sharing your story with us. And Jayla, thank you for interviewing again. You have done a wonderful job. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and so this, my darlings, concludes <laughs> the recording. Right. So right quick. Let me let me cut in my truth. And I thank also I thank God for my two grandchildren, Jayla and Justin. And they turn out to be beautiful children. So we just thank God. Oh, Miss Morgan, they are all right. They are right. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You have a beautiful family because, again, okay, how long has Brother Morgan been deceased? Uh, it's tw it'll be 21 years in April, April 19th this year. 21 years. Mm -hmm. And you all have not missed a step. No. So that lets you know right there that God mm -hmm. was leading the charge while he was in the home. When God called him home, mm -hmm. he he left an impression upon all of you where yeah. you were able to sustain and do what needs to be done. Look at God. Y'all ain't missed a meal, kept a roof over your head, ain't missed a utility bill. Uh, if you did, didn't, didn't nobody know it. That's it. <laughs> so that's a beautiful thing. Again, yeah. thank, thank you all for sharing. I'm sorry. He taught us well. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. And this how it's supposed to be. Yes, ma'am. But you say, I'm able to survive with you, and I'm able to survive when the Lord calls you home, because that's a true testament. When death, and that's the way that God designed it, when death do you part, not because I got an attitude, or not because we got having indifference, but because of death. And that's the way you two did it. So yeah. that was a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Thank you, thank you. Yay! Thank you, thank you. All right, ladies, you all have a wonderful evening and you all be blessed. Stay safe and stay warm. Okay, and, and thank God that the snow is gone. Yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> if it came in, did some turmoil, and now we're good. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so grateful. This mess is out of here. I, can't, I don't know what to say. <laughs>